So, we will start designing the uh, front end AC to DC converter for a uh, uh, for a particular specification. Let us say, so let us write and AC to DC converter. specifications let the input voltage is equal to 1432v and the output dc we require input voltage is the our v a source voltage source voltage peak value then output voltage output DC is equal to 2800 V. This is our V0. Then the switching frequency switching frequency. That is, let us say the mains frequency is 60 hertz, 60 into or 50 means 50 into 11, 60 into 11 is equal to 66 hertz. Okay. So, our triangle period is 11 times the uh, input frequency 60 hertz. Right at power, right at power is equal to 1400 kilowatt ok. Now, let us find out the these are the input specifications. Let us find out the other parameters. This input voltage 1432 is equal to the V RMS voltage V s RMS. So, input peak voltage, we will just note it down, input peak voltage is equal to root 2 into 1 4 3 2 is equal to 2 0 2 5 e. Okay. Rated power is given from the rated power. What are, what is the uh, rated uh, load current? Output maximum load current. Load current maximum. That's the maximum value. Peak load current. Peak load current is equal to. output power 1400 kilowatt divided by so is equal to 500 amps okay this is the output maximum load current now let us assume an efficiency of 98% This also will be efficiency, efficiency of the system 98 percent. So, if the efficiency is 98 percent, how to find out the in RMS input current, maximum input that is. input current that is a peak value RMS is 
R M S. So we can equate the output power to the input power. Okay, so output power divided by the input voltage. So here, if you say this will be is equal to output power, we know it. That is one thousand four hundred into ten power three divided by input power is equal to output power if the efficiency is 100 percent. So, input voltage is equal to RMS is equal to 1432. Now, this efficiency factor comes. So, efficiency is not 100 percent 98 percent. So, input current will also increase accordingly. So, 0 0.98 is equal to 1410 amperes. Okay. So, this this current is the peak value. So, the RMS will be 9.9761 ampere. This is the RMS. So, this into root 2 is this value, peak value. No, sorry, this is not RMS, this is the peak. So, I will change this one. This is the peak value. So, I RMS input RMS, this is the input. is this value. Okay. Now, we know the output voltage is equal to 2800 volts. Okay. Now, with our converter then what is the converter input that is VAB RMS value with a modulation index of 0 0.8. So, that means uh, when the in, uh, converter A B line to line uh, the converter voltage that pole V A B uh, when it is RMS uh, that fundamental uh, when fundamentally is equal to with a modulation index of 0 0.8. So, what should be that voltage so that we can get a maximum uh, with that condition also we can get a maximum output DC of 2800. So, let us go to the next page now. See ma maximum modulation index, index maximum modulation index is only 0 0.8. That means, we are not uh, our sine wave reference is not going to touch the peak value of the triangle waveform to take care of the uh, small notches in uh, which uh, or gate pulses which are uh, which are produced uh, when the sine amplitude is become very close to the triangle. So, the switches may not be able to uh, respond. So, maximum modulation index m we are only re we are resting to 0 0.8. So, our V R peak V R peak the V R peak is our converter is like this. this is our output DC. So, this voltage V A B fundamental of the V A B that is the V R peak is equal to 0 0.8 into 2800 is equal to 2240. Okay. So, RMS value RMS value will be equal to 2240 divided by root 2 is equal to 1584V. That is the fundamental RMS value of this one AB. Now, let us be, uh, be, uh, design our capacitor and the inductor. See, we said we want a delta V 
that is the capacitor voltage of delta V ripple only 5 percent of V 0, 5 percent of the 0 means 0 0.05 into 2800. That means we want a 140 volts peak to peak, 140 volts V only we want peak to peak capacitor ripple. So, from this one we can decide the capacitor C. So, we, de we have derived the equation D4. Okay. This equation what we said delta V should be greater than or equal to that V R into our I divided by 2 V 0 into 2 omega into C, this equation. Okay, V 0 is the output voltage, V R is the fundamental of this one and I 0 is the source current, okay. that is the RMS current, no sorry the uh, peak current we are taking here, I is the peak current. So, from this one we can we can see C, C will be greater than or equal to V R I S divided by 4 into 2 pi F into V 0 into delta V. Okay. We know V R by V S, V R by V S is equal to modulation index. Okay. So, this can be further simplified as C greater than or equal to modulation index M into I S, that I is the input current I S into 4 into 2 pi F into delta V. So, from our data as given C should be greater than or equal to 0 0.8 into 1410 divided by 4 into 2 pi into F is equal to 60 hertz into delta V is 140. So, this will give greater than or equal to 5343.1 microfarad. So, approximately we can choose it next to higher value C will be we use with the 10,000 microfarad. Okay, this is the one we have used for simulation. A, a big converter system this one and this one will not have much effect. So, as close as 10,000 will. So, that will reduce the ripple much less. Inductance from the converter input fundamental V R peak that is the peak value is equal to our V S source voltage peak value plus omega square I S square into L square. Okay. So, from this one L is equal to root of V R square minus V S square, these are all peak values divided by omega square I square here also peak value. So, this will be root of 2240 square minus 2025 square divided by 2 pi into 60 into 1410. This gives approximately 1.20 milli Henry. Okay. This way we can find out. Now, what is the other parameter? The converter we have this uh, the front end converter the transfer function is G by 1 plus S T R. Okay. G. So, with the modulation index of 0.8 the maximum uh, converter gain fundamental amplitude we are getting 2240. Okay. So, our sign triangle comparison if the reference amplitude is 10 volt. Suppose our uh, 
So our triangle amplitude we are generating with a 10 volt amplitude, 10 volt and with a 0.8 uh, m is equal to 0.8. So the maximum triangle amplitude is only 8 volt. So when it comes to 8 volts we will get a output uh, from the converter fundamental of maximum 2240. So the gain G will be 2240 by 8 or you are trying to uh, have a gain with 1 volt. So depending on 10 volts or 1 volt you can have G like this gain you can use it okay. Then TR, TR is the triangle period okay that will be 1 by 60 into 11, 1 by F that is up 1.515 millisecond okay. This we can find out. Current controller gain K1 is equal to L by Ki into G into T. Okay. L is equal to 1.8 milli Henry approximately. So 1.8 into 10 raised to minus 3 milli Henry and Ki. So the maximum peak current is 1.41 amperes. So again here Ki 1.410 amperes. Now if you use a sensor and step down and bring it to the uh, so we will drop to a resistance and we get the voltage and step down to a smaller voltage level. Then suppose 10 volt, 1.410 1 uh, ampere comes you know the feedback gain gives a 10 volt maximum. Then the gain is how much? 10 divided by 1.140 or if it is 1, 1 volt it is uh, 1 divided by 1.410. Uh, uh, so here you can approximately, you can suppose here in the simulation we have all made it is plus or minus 1 volt. So 1 divided by 1.410 into G. Oh, sorry, here we have made it if it is 10 volt, 10 divided 1.140 and the gain is equal to 2240 divided by 10 into T, T is equal to 2 TR, this is equal to 2 TR that is 2 into 1.515 into 10 raised to minus 3. So this will get cancelled, this will approximately give gain of 0 0.38, okay, that is the gain we get. Similarly, we can find out the Tn and Kn value. We have derived the equations yesterday. So, from that yesterday's equation, Kn is equal to 4Ki V0 C by root 2 Kv input voltage Vs into Pn. Okay, one equation from one equation, the other equation we got two equations by equating the A0, A1, A2, A3 from the third order system Kn is equal to Ki V0 C by root 2 Kv Vs into T. Vs, we, we all this subscript with the CS is uh, referring to the source. So from this one we can appropriate gains, we can put Kn what we got is 9.06 okay and Tn we got Tn is equal to 8 Tr or Tn is equal to 40. So these are the values we get it. Now with these values we can attempt a simulation. Before simulation uh, then we can do the fine tuning. So let us get the final block diagram before simulation. So here the block, the block schematic of the current controller. Of the control loop, control loop, loop. 
AC to DC converter. So here we have the V0 reference. Here comes the feedback. This we are giving to a PA controller. The parameters of PA controller we have. Then this give our IS reference. This we are multiplying with a sinusoidal reference sin omega t which is taken from our which is uh, in phase with our mains. Then some phase lead uh, we have to give to take care of the because sinusoidal we are uh, controlling the sinusoidal input and sinusoidal currents and uh, as I told before assuming high frequency PWM so during the control we, are, we can assume nearly constant and also the frequency is fixed okay the, the loop can the feedback can uh, can have a uh, phase, uh, phase uh, lag it can create a phase to compensate that one reference will give a phase lead that we can trial and we can adjust a minor phase lead because the phase lag is basically only due to the converter okay. So, this multiply it, this is our final IS reference, IST reference, this is a function of time, okay. This comes here, to this one we are giving the current gain that is L divided by K i G T, okay. To this one, we are giving the this minus our source voltage, we can sense it, and again that also can be reduced by a gain of G so that converter gain will be. G by 1 plus STR, G by 1 plus STR, okay. This again, this is our VR fundamental, actual value, this minus Vs, that source voltage Vs integral one by integral will get our actual IS current that with the gain feedback okay from the from this one multiplied by the from the power balance input output power balance will get V s peak divided by 2 V 0 that is our I d plus minus our I load one by C integral capacitor voltage then the voltage reduction KV, we will give it here. So, here all the parameters we have selected G we know, 1 by C, C we know, L we know, K everything selected, these are all simple gain to bring it to the control loop, okay. We can design our controller. Now, how to design our PA controller? In software it is very easy, lot of uh, algorithms are available. But if you want to design with analog controller P i, how you design it? So, we will uh, before a simulation, simulation control blocks we can simply drag and do it. But actual implementation, how do you realize P, P i controllers? We will come to that one now. We will start from P i and P i controller, how to take care of the saturation and how to design in analog domain using operation ampli amplifier, some simple technique P 
controller. See, using operation amplifier. See, this is our R1. Here is our V input. This is our R feedback. Okay. Now, many times we want to control the gain. So, either we can vary R1 or Rf. But if you vary the R1, operation amplifier, practical operation amplifiers, if you vary it, it can get into the offset minimum bias current uh, problem here. So, Rf by controlling by mistake, we can uh, short the input to output. So, we do not want to disturb the basic uh, parameters of the operation amplifier to properly bias it. So, controller we will do it like this, we will put a some 10 k resistance here and a small value here maybe 1 k. So, that and here use a port and give it here. So, this is actual V0 and this is alpha V0. Alpha with the uh, uh, potentiometer control, we will get the thing. So, here 1 k we put by mistake, you know, we should not short the output quickly. It can in a real practical system, if you do suddenly, we are shorting the output, it can create problem. So, what is the output? So, here it this will have a negative gain, okay, that we can again make it positive by another uh, unity gain amplifier, okay, another one more inversion. So, let us see how do you do, how here the input current we know because this point is grounded here because of the high gain of the operation amplifier, this output, this will also, this will follow this input. So, this since it is 0 in steady state, once the operation amplifier is biased, this point also at 0 voltage, this is called virtual ground, this is because of the high gain of the operation amplifier. Okay, high gain with this feedback, so that uh, it will make this one, this input will uh, the, uh, follow each other. Okay, so the error will be very minimal. Now, assuming this point is at zero potential, that is here. What is the input current? Input current is equal to V in divided by R. Okay. This current because of the high input input, it will not go through this one, it will go through Rf. So, the output voltage V0 will be, what will be the output voltage? Here the output, this is connected to alpha V0, okay. So, not V0. So, the output voltage V in into Rf, there is a negative gain is there because the uh, operation amplifier construction is equal to alpha V0, okay. Now, but this may be the output we will be giving to the next stage. So, what we want exactly not alpha V0, V0, V0 by V in, that is a proportional gain is equal to minus 1 by alpha into R of by R1, R1. So, by varying alpha, so varying potential uh, potentiometer, we can control the gain P, okay. This is one thing. Now, similarly, let us take the integral controller. Same configuration, we can use it, integral controller. Let us take the integral controller. Again, V in R1 okay, this will be connected here. This is the capacitance. Here also the time constant, integral time constant we want to vary. See vary capacitor variation. 
online tuning it is very difficult. Then again we can vary R1 here as I told any R1 variation practical operation amplifier we will we will not we will be disturbing the bias current. So, we do not want to do that one. Again we will use a high value potential water and small potential resistance to take care of shorting part. So, here this will do this is the V0 V1. So, here also what is the input current? input current through the resistance. The input current is equal to V in by R1. Okay. This current will go through this capacitor and integrate it. So, the capacitor voltage will be, so the output voltage, so this capacitor voltage it will increase and it will be equal to alpha V0. So, integral, so let us go to the next page. So, the capacitor voltage will be integral I in dt by c is equal to minus alpha v0. So, let us take the Laplace domain that will be equal to i in divided by s c is equal to minus alpha v0. i in is equal to v in by r c s. So, this will be equal to v in divided by R1 CS is equal to minus alpha V0. So, again V0 by here if you say V0 by V in is equal to minus 1 by alpha R1 CS. So, here what we are changing this time constant RC by varying alpha. So, by varying alpha varying this alpha, we are varying the R 1 C time constant. This way we can vary the time constant. Now, let us with the P and I using this type of, uh, this, this type of uh, using this technique of controlling the gain as well as time constant. Uh, let us realize a practical P A control. Let us take this is R 1, this is V in, minus plus, okay. this is our R of this our resistance. Okay. Actually, we have to give one more, this is the potentiometer. Here, we have to give a one more small resistance and then ground it. So, potentiometer can be varied. Now, this one will be, this is the P part. Now, let us take the I part. I part will be from here, this is our R2, grounded, again here for time constant adjustment. Okay. This is how this we will mark as V01, this output we will mark as V02. This is V02. So, this is alpha V02. 
okay this is alpha this is alpha 1 this alpha 2 alpha 2 v 0 to this k okay. Now p and i but we want a p a controller finally we have to sum these two so that output should be a p a controller so here we will do like this this output will connect it to a configuration like this. This is R1, this is also R1, so we will go here, okay. Another R1, okay. We will take the difference of these two input. One is here, this input will go to V01, V01 means here. So, this output will give a PA controller. Here in independently we can control the P as well as I part. See suppose the previous representation if you take it this way, if you do the PA controller, it is very difficult to independently control the P as well, anyth anything vary it will vary the time constant also. So, here also if you vary it will uh, change the uh, P part also. So, this will not independently will not be able to adjust the P and I. So, that is why, it, but this will be able to al with alpha 1 control we can control P and alpha 2 control as before uh, we can time the integral time constant, okay. So, now let us find out whether this represent a PA controller V01, V02. So, let us say V01 by V in is equal to from the previous is equal to 1 by alpha 1 into R of by R1, okay. V02 by V01 is equal to minus 1 by alpha 2 r 2 this c okay r 2 c into s yes, okay. So, from this one v 0 so, but v 0 2 is depending on v 0 1. So, what is v 0 2? v 0 2 is v 0 2 is equal to minus 1 by alpha 2 r 2 C s into V 0 1, okay. So, let us substitute for V 0 1 that is equal to minus 1 by alpha 2 r 2 C into f into s, sorry this f is not there C. C into S, V 0 1 we are substituting that is minus 1 by alpha 1 into R of by R 1 into V. Okay. Now, what is the final V 0? That is the final V 0. Final V0 is equal to we are using R1, R1. So, gain is same that will be equal to minus of V0 to minus V0. So, V0 will be sorry. So, final V0 
this V0 is equal to minus of V0 2 minus V0 1. That will be equal to V0 2 from this equation. 1 by alpha 2 alpha 1 R of by R 2 R 1 C s into V in then minus of V 0 1 that is minus 1 by alpha 1 into R of by R 1 into V in. Okay. So, this we can again simplify is equal to minus R of by R 1 alpha 1 into V in into 1 plus 1 by alpha 2 R 2 C s it will come. This is of the form this is of the form k n into 1 plus T n s divided by T n s. So, T n will be T n is this value. This is the k n value r of pi r 1. Okay. So, k n value we can control by varying alpha 1. Then T n value is alpha 2 r 2 r 2 c. This is the T n. This is T n. This is our k n p i controller k n value. So, T n can be varied with respect to this one. See in many applications this output we want to control V0. V0 many applications output we do not want we want from we want to go from a minus negative to po, uh, positive negative okay. for control application. Suppose this is we are VR reference we are giving okay. we are peak value. So, we are and if the control level is maximum 10, plus 10 to minus 10 or plus 5 to minus 5 or 0 to 5 we have to limit the output. Similar, similar way we have we should because of large error capacitor also should not saturate. Saturate uh, that means it should not go to the power supply level and the operation amplifier should not saturate. Then this will affect the dynamics. So, capacitor voltage also we want to limit it this output plus or minus 10 value. So, how to limit this one? We will see the for the output that is the same thing we can use it for the uh, eye control also. So, I will remove these parts and then see how we can limit it. Okay. So, now we want to limit the output. If you see here in this equation V0 by Vn will be of the form this PI controller value that is this PI controller. So, V0 we want to limit it. How to limit it? So, let us take this another operation amplifier. It is not with feedback gain negative. So, this here we will give it here approximately around some 22 k. Okay. Then this part we will give to a let us say plus 15 volt. So, this is the positive limit, positive limit that is upper limit. Then we will put a diode here. Okay. Now, one more operation amplifier, we will put it for the negative limit. This is the negative terminal and this is the positive. Here also put around 22 k here. 
both are 22 k. Here we will give to the negative limit minus 15 volt that is negative limit that is over the lower limit of V0. Okay. Now we have the we will put a diode like this here. See because there is no feedback this operation amplifier output can positive or negative. So normal operation this should not come into picture. So let us take the condition when the output goes suppose this is output goes from 0 to this is 0 this is plus 12 volt. Assuming this is limited this limitation uh, we want to limit it for a 10 volt that is somewhere here we want to limit it 10 volt here also 10 volt. So this this we will fix it to 10 volt 10 this one minus 10 okay. So let us say the output uh, variation is within this period less than 10 volt. So here this is this point is less than 10 volt but this is already 10 volt. So output is positive and but it will not appear here because the diode is connected the other way. Now for the second one this is less than 10 volt. So this is already negative. So this output become negative and this will not come here. Now let us take output goes more than 10 volt. Let us say this is limited to 10 there is it will go to 12 volt. So what happens here? this is negative more than this value. So output become quickly go to a, a very high value because it is open loop it can it can go to minus 10 and if this we connect here from this point with a small resistance some small resistance and connect it here. So that this small resistance is much less than this one why this one to this effect of this one should have much more than these two. So when it become quickly positive here, so sorry it, when this output goes more than uh, 10 volt this output become negative immediately it will come here it will try to bring the output. So what happens because of the high open loop gain this will make it this gain is sufficient so that even though this output goes this output will be it output will stay here at 10 volt okay. and again when the output goes more than this value negative. So this side is more than negative already negative so this will become positive this is positive so output will try to push it here. So this output so that this output are very close and appropriate gain will come here it will add to this one and bring the output to limit this output to these two values. So if you observe here there may be because it is tracking the output. So it can be oscillations here. So we can may make a, a 100 PF here that will take care of the oscillation here. Here also we can give a 100 PF small capacitor why see his, it is trying to track this voltage here and there is high this is high gain operation amplifier is quickly track. So output there is, can be a fluctuate small oscillation can be there to avoid that one put a 100 PF. So this way this output can be limited. Suppose we want the output go from 0 to positive only then this point instead of negative you ground it. Now suppose the output want to go to 0 to negative. So 0 means this output you ground it and this you minus 10 this way we can do. Same way the same configuration we can use it here also across the capacitor and here the same configuration we can use it here. So that we can ensure that this capacitor voltage will not saturate that means it will not go to 15 volt plus or uh, 10 volt within so that any error error comes you know capacitor will not uh, saturate if it saturate and if you go to power supply then again to bring back the uh, operational amplifier into the dynamic region it will it will can in introduce a stability problem. So this can be incorporated here also the what we talk about the anti wind up capacitor saturation we can avoid here so that capacitor also will not keep on integrate and saturate maximum is limited positive and negative okay so that will improve the dynamic response so this is the analog domain but in dsp we can use it with the 
standard algorithms, lot of algorithms are there which I will not be talking now, it is all BSP manuals it will give. But simulation we have standard blocks we will bring it and try to put it and try to see our front end AC to DC converter, okay. So what I want you to know that one independently P and I can be controlled here at this time output can be limited whatever the value we want. Also exactly using the same block here the capacitor uh, saturation also we can control. So we will study the simulation part in the next class.